Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. And here he is, Michael Savage. Devil or angel, I can't make up my mind. It is the Savage Nation. Welcome to the program. I appreciate you tuning in tonight. For two days I've been talking about uh, a circumcision ritual. Tonight I'm not going to talk about a circumcision ritual, but I'm going to talk about the persecution of another religious group in the United States of America who nobody gives a damn about because they're not a voting bloc and they are the Amish. Do you know that your government has sentenced... Amish people, 15 years in jail for cutting the beards of their neighbors. Now, if I made this up and said it occurred in the Soviet Union, you'd say, well, I can understand Stalin doing that to get rid of some uh, political enemies. The United States of America has thrown the book at a group of Amish people and given them up to 15 years in prison. These are gentle, kind, nonviolent people. They mind their businesses. They mind their business and their businesses. They're traditional descendants of an, uh, an old Christian sect, the Amish I'm talking about. They don't live in the modern world. Your government, under Barack Hussein Obama, and one of his federal Nazi prosecutors, whose name I will give you shortly, have thrown the book at the Amish 15 years in prison for cutting the beards of their neighbors. You say, well, why should I care about that? Why should you care about that? Why should you care about that? There is war in the Jewish community in Brooklyn between the the Satmar Hasids and the Lubavitch Hasids. They beat each other up, they do things to each other, and they take care of it internally. So why would they then why would the government take the Amish and crucify them for an internal dispute and throw them in jail for fifteen years? break up the families, and separate them out of state where the families can't even visit them because they don't fly and they don't drive. They use horses and buggies. Why would your fascist Nazi government do this to the Amish? I'll ask you another question. John, uh, Corzine, John Corzine, zero years for $1.7 billion in missing dollars. We're not saying he stole it. I wouldn't suggest that at all. He's an honest man. He's the former director of uh, well, Goldman Sachs. He is the former governor of New Jersey, a senator. He would never steal a dime. But under his watch, John Corzine, $1.7 billion went missing. He received zero days in prison. In fact, he's never been prosecuted. But the Amish cut the neighbor's beard off, and they got 15 years in jail. I'll ask you a question. How come MS-13 gang members who kill people get less sentences in the United States of America? How come drug dealers are given lower sentences than beard cutters? How did this happen? Who is the prosecutor? Do you care? Well, you don't care because you're not an Amish. When they came for the Amish, you didn't raise your voice because you're not Amish. That's You, see, you don't understand how Nazi Germany worked, do you? You know the phrase, don't you, that was written? When they came for the communists, I didn't raise my voice because I wasn't a communist. When they came for the trade unionists, I didn't raise my voice because I wasn't a trade unionist. When they came for the Jews, I didn't raise my voice because I wasn't a Jew. When they came for me, there was no one left to defend me because everybody was in jail. Cardinal Niemöller wrote that. Cardinal Niemöller wrote that, a very, very saintly religious man. So I feel I have to raise my voice for the Amish. I don't have a question to ask you. It's on michaelsavage.com. Amish crucified by government. Fifteen years in jail for beard cutting of their neighbors. How is this possible? Well, here are some of the other stories on michaelsavage.com. And before I get to them, and I'll give you all the news of the day, I want to play an Associated Press report on the Amish beard cutting in clip 22. An Amish community in Ohio held its end of school celebration early so that family members could have a last chance to spend time together. Four women and one man go to prison on Friday following nine other Amish people already there. We didn't do it for a hate crime or for, for kidnapping or anything. 
It was more just a family dispute. The Amish men and women were sentenced for forcibly cutting the hair and beards of their fellow Amish men and women. Married Amish men don't cut their beards, and women don't cut their hair. Okay. The Amish now, also don't... not only did the Nazi government, not only did your Nazi federal government do this to the Amish, and they'll do it to you, too. If you don't understand what I'm saying to you, I'm going to make you understand how dangerous this is. To let this Nazi prosecutor get away with this without raising my voice would make me complicit in the Nazi-like behavior of this prosecutor. How is this possible in America? That nobody's raising their voice for the Amish but me, and I never met an Amish person. I don't even know who they are. I don't know who they are. But if they can come for the Amish and put them in jail for cutting the beards of their neighbors and give them 15 years, they can come for you for no reason whatsoever. Who did this to them? Assistant U.S. Attorney Bridget Brennan is one of the prosecutors whose name we have found. She tried to keep them from even have a, have a bond a year ago, so he, she wanted them thrown in jail. She has a name. Assistant U.S. Attorney Bridget Brennan. That's the only name we've been able to find so far of the federal prosecutorial regime in the United States of America. You should be outraged by this. Why is this government going after religious people? Don't you see the bigger picture? If they can take the Amish and throw them in prison for 15 years for a simple act of cutting their neighbor's beard off in a dispute, calling it a hate crime, what could they do to Jews, Christians, or Muslims in this country? Anything they wish. And that's why you, the listener of the Savage Nation, have an obligation to pay careful attention. All day long you've heard everything about guns and this and that. Great, I'm glad. I'm not going to talk about the obvious. You've heard it all day long. We've heard about it, but you haven't heard about this, have you? Now let's listen to the next soundbite on your fascist Nazi federal prosecutorial regime going after the Amish. Listen to 23. The Amish also don't drive cars or fly in planes. That's why members of the community say the federal government's decision to sentence the men and women to prisons in several different states is an unfair burden. I never dreamed I'd get a plane ride. But this is just about too far for one driver to go to drive out there and back. To me, it's an injustice to our community because we've been told several times that when someone is moved, the law book says they can't move them more than 300 miles so we can have visitation. The Amish defendants didn't deny the hair and beard cutting, but they said it stemmed from religious and family disputes and should have been handled internally. I believe the prosecutor should be imprisoned for a hate crime. I believe that I'm going to work on this for the next three days. I'm going to get you the name of the prosecutor who did this to them. I'm going to call for the investigation, a criminal investigation of the prosecutor who did this to the Amish, and I'm going to call for their arrest and trial for a hate crime against the Amish. That's what I'm going to do for the next three days. And I hope you join me because I'm going to start a defense fund for the Amish. How do you like that? I have raised money for soldiers unfairly accused. I have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for soldiers unfairly accused. I've raised lots of money for police unfairly accused, none of whom I've ever met, incidentally. Never got a thank you note from any of them. Don't need it. There's such a thing as right and wrong. And I am telling you this is one of the greatest injustices in, that I've ever seen in my life. They called it a hate crime. Now, not only that, but because of their religious beliefs, they are not allowed to be separated by more than 300 miles. And yet this fascist Nazi regime separated them by 1,500 miles in some cases, putting them in prisons with hardened prisoners from the third world who will kill them in prison, who will persecute them in prison. Why is your government destroying this Christian sect? Look deeply into what I am saying. Look deeply into what I am saying. Why is Obama partying on like a psychotic teenager in the White House while a grave injustice is being done to innocent Amish people in America? I know this doesn't matter to you very much. Trust me, my instincts tell me you could care less. Because it's not you. What do you care about the Amish? You know, what do you give a damn? What do you give a damn about? Who are they? A bunch of clowns with a, with a, a buggy and a whip. And they make plates, and they do. They make a wax candle. Who gives a damn what happens to them? Well, that's one attitude. 
That's an attitude you can take. You could take that attitude. It wouldn't matter to you. Well, if I can raise money to, to, to try and save elephants because the butchers in the U.N. are letting the elephants be butchered so that the pigs in China, the bourgeois pigs in China, can show off a tusk, then I can also get excited about Amish being crucified by Barack Hussein Obama's federal Nazi police force given 15 years for beard cutting. I want this case retried. I want this retried on appeal. I want the federal prosecutor tried for a hate crime for persecuting them. Do you think I'm right or wrong? That's what I want to know. I'd like to know what's behind this case. Does anyone know? I'd like to know what you think of this case. WMAL, John, you're on the Savage Nation. Your opinion, please. Yes, uh, I live in Pennsylvania, and these are very, very shrewd people. Um, now, I'm not saying that what they did was right or correct. It's their beliefs, but putting the law system uh, in place of going against or, or against the civil rights of the people of what they believe in uh, is not necessarily right of what was of what was pursued. There's many worse people out there, but. All right, right, so let's start with that. There are worse crimes than cutting your neighbor's beard. Do you think that the, the punishment matches the crime? No, absolutely not. But So why do you think Obama has permitted this and croons with the, uh, with, with the, the singers in the White House while this grave injustice? Not one Jew has come to the aid of the Amish. Not one Christian has come to the aid of the Amish. Not one Protestant has come to the aid of the Amish. Not one Muslim has come to the aid of the Amish. Not one Buddhist has come to the aid of the Amish. Only yours truly is coming to the aid of the Amish. Why am I doing it? Because if they this to the Amish, they could do it to you. They are outside the system. They do not believe in the laws of the federal system. No, the reason that they're being the, the book was thrown at them is for two reasons. One, the government is testing how far they can go in taking down a minority religious sect and see if there's an outcry in the country. That's number one. Number two, the government is going to seize property and steal their property from them uh, in some form of uh, rigged up punishment. Number three, there's something else involved here that I don't know anything about. I can't put my finger on it. For the federal government to give a man 15 years, and four women, by the way, and then separate the families by a thousand miles so they can't even visit each other, putting them in prison with MS-13 gang members, a Russian mafia gang members, why are they doing this to them? It's like the Soviet Union. I, I can tell you that... The Amish are to the Christians what the Hasidic Jews are to the Jews. Do you understand that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I... Now, let me explain that again. What the Hasidic Jewish community is to the mainstream Jewish community is what the Amish are to the mainstream Christian community. They're a small offshoot that practices a primitive form of Christianity, and they live in another dimension and another time. And that is why we must protect them. They are the most vulnerable of all religious people in the United States of America. But there's another element, and here's the sad part. Thank God for the Jewish community in Brooklyn, they have representation because they're a large voting bloc, and the politicians are afraid of them. They won't touch them, thank God. They learned from the Holocaust to join together. The Amish don't have those numbers. They're not a voting bloc. They have no representation whatsoever. They have no congressman. They certainly don't have a senator. And as we all know, they certainly don't have a president. I'll be right back. Do you think I'm wrong for raising such a, uh, a loud voice in defense of the Amish? Do you think that I shouldn't do it? Like, who cares about them? Who are they, a bunch of throwbacks? What do you care Let's move on. It's not about a Harvey Weinstein movie. It's not about some slut in Hollywood, some dr junky drug addict coming out for gun control. It's not for some false man pretending to be a lover. I mean, what is this about? What country am I living in? I never thought I'd wake up and read that. I, I can't believe it. This is an eye for an eye. You cut a beard and you go to jail for 15 years? That's an eye for an eye? They, they made it a hate crime? Who did this? Who in the federal government did this and why are they doing it is the bigger question. Why would they give this man, who, by the way, didn't even participate in the beard cutting? Do you know that? Samuel Mullet Sr., who did not participate in the five hair and beard cutting incidents, was tried as the leader of the campaign. He was given 15 years in prison. Fifteen others were given lighter sentences. For what? 
Why is your government spending a fortune? Why did they spend a fortune busting these people, persecuting the people, and sending them to, to jail for 15? You say, well, what does it have to do with me? I have to pay my bills tomorrow. I got a headache listening to you. What does this mean to me? I don't know. What does it mean to you? What does anything mean to you? You could care only about yourself, or you can care about someone else, or you can care about... Well, you see, there's a bigger picture here. If they can do this to the Amish and get away with it, they can do it to you. Tomorrow they can come for a, uh, uh, a I don't know, a Buddhist sect that they may not like. Then the next day they can come for a Jewish sect that they may not like. They, they can come for another Christian sect. They can come for a Muslim sect. Don't you understand what I'm saying to you? This is a crime against humanity. If this happened, let's put it to you another way. What if you read that a group of Christians who are innocents, they live a simple life, they ride in buggies and whip and, and, and a, a buggy, they make uh, very simple crafts, they marry, they have children, they're very clean living, and they lived in a country called, um, well, I don't know, North Korea. And then we read that the North Korean government found that some of these Christians engaged in a dispute with their neighboring Christians and uh, cut their beards off. And Kim Jong-un prosecuted them with his favorite prosecutor, and they gave the man 15 years in prison. The U.N. would be all over this, wouldn't it? All of the self-righteous liberal phonies, I love the ones who ride around in Marin County, California, were on their cars saying, free Tibet. I, I'm, I'm stunned by it. Free Tibet, that's the only thing on their mind. The gerbil man started that. Free Tibet, that's their biggest problem. Here, right in their own country, the Amish are being treated worse than the Tibetans are being treated by the Chinese. This is the, the most grievous case of religious persecution I have seen in my lifetime in the United States of America. I've never seen anything like this. That's why I'm shocked. He who saves a single life, it is as though he has saved the entire world. Help me save these poor people from Barack Hussein Obama's federal prosecutors. Today's the kind of day I wish I could wake up and be 15 years old again and be innocent and not, not know what goes on in the world. You know, I really do wish I could just go to geometry and uh, be worrying about what I'm going to do this summer, which hotel I'm going to work in, where I'm going to be a busboy or a waiter to make money to go to college, and uh, see a whole life ahead of me, not even understand the horrors of the world. And sometimes the burden is too heavy for me, I'll be honest with you. I'm reaching a point where I can't look at this anymore. I don't know whether it's gotten worse under Obama, or it's always been like this and there's more reportage. You know, you could look at it a couple of different ways. But truthfully, in my life in radio, which is since 1994, when I've been, you know, hyperactively involved in politics, I've always been political ever since teenage years. But I've been hyperactively political since 1994 because I have to do a daily show. I don't know of another story that approximates this in terms of religious persecution in the world. I don't know of, I don't even know of anything like this happened currently in Pakistan. Well, you could say it gets worse where the, the Sunnis blow up the Shia and the Shia blow up the Sunnis, they blow up uh, each other's mosques. Certainly, yes. But I don't know of a government that goes in and gives a sentence like this in any other country on earth to a religious sect because within the sect they had a dispute and they cut off either a guy's beard. They called it a hate crime and then you got a vicious Nazi prosecutor who should be investigated. And when, when we get through with this case, and I'm not through yet, I just started today, we're going to find the name of the prosecutor, he or her, who they are. We're going to see if we can have them tried for a hate crime for doing this to the uh, Amish. In other words, say, all right, so they committed a crime, so you try him and you give him a 30-day suspended. Why are they breaking up families? This is frightening to me. There's something wrong for them to go after this Amish community in Ohio and give a man 15 years for telling others within his uh, religion to forcibly cut the hair and beards of their fellow Amish men and women. They made it a hate crime and they gave the man 15 years. Why are they doing this? And if they can get away with it with the Amish tomorrow, they get away with it homeschoolers. Let me bring it home. Let me, let me bring it all down home for all of you right-wingers out there. And all of you 
knee-jerk conservatives. Because, you know, we heard knee-jerk liberals. Unfortunately, there's now knee-jerk conservatives as well. So let me give you a little knee-jerking. If you're a homeschooler, who says tomorrow the Obama administration can't seek some fake charges against you for not complying with a doctor, a fake quack doctor who says, your child has ADD, you have to give that child some toxic medication, and if you don't give that child toxic medication, you're going to be thrown in prison under a hate crime against children, and they'll take your house away. It can't happen here, right? Well, it just happened here. It is happening here. Oh, I understand he's a nice man with a nice wife, and they care about guns, and they have nice daughters. And last night they got down with... Um, some nice blues singers. That's really great. That's just great. This guy is so classy, it's it's enough to make you proud to be an American all over again. He has such class. He has elevated the status of the White House to a level that I've yet, yet not seen in my lifetime. Well, look at the people who visit. Look at his guest lists. Look at the sleazy deals being done behind the behind the scenes. And take a look at the entertainers he brings in there. It's beyond comprehension. And at the same time, a religious sect is being crucified by the government. I'm only going to do this a little while longer, and then I'm going to move on to other, the other news of the day. There's things I haven't done yet. I Like there's uh, little things that I haven't done yet, which I'll get to. Little things, I mean, news, views, and reviews from, you know, all the way down to popular media, like the show Mad Men, which many of you don't watch, by Matthew Weiner. A piece of, I've never seen any garbage like this in my life. I mean, when it first came out, Mad Men, it was something. Then it got worse and worse each year. Now, all of a sudden, I woke up. I said, this can't... All the liberals are tripping over themselves because they, they're supposed to gush over Mad Men. They were told, they were given the marching orders, Mad Men, Mad Men, Mad Men. Don has a big you-know-what, and she has a look at his... Uh, take a look at how he wears pants. I never saw anything like this. The worst, I had to turn it off. How did this happen? How did Matthew Weiner sink to this level? That's another topic that you're not interested in. Springfield, Missouri. Darwin, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, long-time listener, and thank you for years of entertainment. Um, I have two points on this. Number one... So, so you, find, you find my coverage of a man put in jail for 15 years for cutting beards entertaining. That's, that's an interesting way to look at it. Well, not that, but just the years that you've given me over the... All right, I just wanted to do a test. I had to put my uh, my voltometer into you to see exactly where your current was coming from. <laughs> well, thank you. Hey, um, two points. First of all, we live in a, in a land that goes by the rule of law, and his, this behavior probably fell under an assault statute of some kind. Unfortunately, with the feds and our federal criminal justice system, we have kingpin laws, so they probably got him on a conspiracy and made him a ringleader. Now, while the... Yes, and they're, and they're going to try to take his farm away and steal his farm from him under a RICO statute. This is a criminal act on the part of the federal government. That's what I'm getting at. But what I'm saying is that... Although the, the crime, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Thank you. If this was left out there to, to not be punished, then people that follow Sharia law would then be able to stone their daughter for being an adulterer. Or... Oh, that's very interesting. When have you last read of uh, a Muslim being sent to jail for 15 years for killing his daughter uh, because she dated a non-Muslim? I can guarantee you murder raps are now prosecuted with less time than this. And I would agree with you. I can guarantee you that if you investigate this, that cultural murders in this country, and I'll investigate this for you, cultural crimes, cultural murders in particular, homicides based upon cultural uh, insanities, are probably prosecuted with less vigor, and the ultimate sentence is no doubt lower than 15 years. We've got lots of Amish here in southwest Missouri. and uh, well, well, Generally, they're very nice people, aren't they? Yes, they are. They're, they're kind, they're gentle, they're family-oriented. I've never heard of anyone say a negative thing about the Amish, except the U.S. federal government. Thank you. And this punishment does not fit the crime, by the way. So 
Why do you think Obama's doing this? Steve on WABC, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you, Michael. You're a mensch. You're a real mensch. After last night and the circumcision stick, I almost got despondent and I was going to turn the radio off forever. Thank God that I did not do that. Your statement and your defense is first class. I think you're absolutely right. What it is, your assessment is so sharp, it is an attempt by the Obama administration to do some sort of a backdoor. It is, no, wait, what, what does this have to do with Sharia law? This is These are Christians. It is an attempt to crucify a minority religion. That's what it yeah, is. Well, that's, that's clearly what has happened here. And Eric Holder, who's in charge of the federal prosecutors, has persecuted this, this minority Christian sect. That is correct. He could have stopped this at any point along the way. Why is it the big mouth New York attorneys who are uh, all over First Amendment cases, etc., how come they haven't come to the aid of these Amish people? Where are all of the big mouths on the Upper East Side tonight? Where are they, taking Prozac and drinking white wine so they go home and want to throw themselves out of the apartment building because they know what rats they are? I am so fed up with these fraudulent First Amendment attorneys in New York who posture as great defenders of freedom. But don't, don't you know... I have a couple of questions for you. First of all, I recognize your voice. You are the Dutchman who lived through the Holocaust. Is that correct? You're almost right. My father's family... No, your father's family did, but you were born in Holland, correct? That's correct, sir. All right. And you converted to Christianity as well, correct? No. The fact was that my father was allowed to marry my Christian mother if he would uh, let his children grow up in the Christian faith because nobody ever thought that as a Jew you could practice any kind of Jewishness in a country like Holland or Germany or anywhere in Europe. And you know what? It... Well, wait, why did you want to turn the show off last night? What got to you? What, what made you upset? Well, I think that every, um, let's say, Jewish person of Jewish descent who has not been circumcised, like I have not been, and I assume you have not been either, has some strange issue with this particular practice. And the reason why is that... Oh, wait, I don't understand, but why would you, a long-term fan of the show, what so upset you that you wanted to never listen to me again? Because I think you were um, going overboard, pointing out the same thing over and over again, with a minority, it's only you did not help the quote-unquote Jewish cause, if that's what you want to do. You picked on a very small minority, rightfully so, but still a very small minority. There are more things more important in life than what this small minority Jewish sect is doing. The issue tonight is far more important, in my opinion, than the one last night. But that's for you to judge and not for me. That's for your listeners. All right, fair enough. I disagree with you for other reasons, but go on. I'm glad that you stuck with the show. So do you feel, uh, obviously you feel, that the government is persecuting these Amish, inordinately persecuting them for re reasons that that could become quite obvious to anyone who studies this. So what is that obvious reason? The reason is is that the Jews vote as a, my, as a majority for the Obama. No, no, we're talking about the Amish now. I know that, and I will get to that. Now, if you want to hammer down a minority group, a large minority group, which one would you pick? If you want to intimidate them, which one would you pick? You pick the smallest and the most defenseless without any representation. All right, so you're going to pick first on the Jews. He can't do that because they all vote for him. That's his largest supporters group. So what, in essence, the Jews who should speak up, the Christians that should speak up, are not speaking up, and he realizes that. So what he's doing, he's picking on the Amish or any other minority group, and at the same time, and this is even more important, he is signaling to the Muslim Brotherhood worldwide that in America you can pick on a religious minority and give them 15 years. You don't even get 15 years in Egypt as a Christian. This is the point. So you think he's appeasing his Muslim followers by attacking the Amish? Of course he is. Not only him, but the same Jews that helped him, that voted for him. Because what, what did the Jews have to do with that? I don't. I'm not following you. Well, it's very simple. What is the biggest block of voters? Oh wait, you're, you're mixing apples with oranges. You're mis mixing Jewish people with Amish. First, you make sense. Then you make no sense. The Amish.
Amish are wonderful people. They are people that live on farms. When a building burns... Yeah, I understand that. That's why I'm even bothering to uh, inject this into a, a national radio show. No one else has done this. I'm trying to raise the awareness so that they can get an appeal going and they can be released from prison. And the federal prosecutor who did this can be dragged before a court and charged with a hate crime for doing this to them. You are the Wouldn't that be nice to see a federal prosecutor drag before a court for having practiced a hate crime against a religious minority and, and see them prosecuted? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Absolutely. It'll never happen. It'll never happen in a million years. The most I could do is raise money for the Amish and try to get them an appeal going and get them a good lawyer. Something's wrong with this picture. Something is wrong with this picture. I don't know why your government is doing this. And uh, we'll move on, because I don't think you care much about it. WMAL, Washington, D.C. Bill, go ahead, please. Well, Dr. Savage, what, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to talk with you. And by the way, I hope all is well with Teddy tonight. Oh, Teddy's fine. He's over a surgery. Oh, that's that's good to hear. Yeah, no, no. People ask about it. It was a long time ago. You know, he had the surgery. He's fine. Oh, that's great. I know you love animals. I'm an animal rescue, and the point being, I think the government's going after the Amish because uh, they're they're defenseless, and they're outside the system. Uh, I work with. Uh, I'm an animal rescue, and got. That's exactly what I think. There's no sense to this. A hate, a hate crime, 15 years in prison, and no one says a word? It's an outrage. Well, I'm going to continue this until until they get an appeal going. I want to find out what's really going on here. Tomorrow we're going to have their lawyer on. We're going to try and dig up some interest and in, uh, stir up interest. We're going to embarrass Eric Holder and Obama with this until they move in and, and release them from prison. Something's wrong, okay? I believe it's part of a bigger plot and a bigger, bigger campaign to go after other religious, uh, minority religious groups. That's what I'm talking about. That's all. That's all. Now, Hillary Clinton, as you well know, is a really sterling individual. She was never involved in any scandals. She's done ever, nothing but good for the world. Uh, look at the good she's done in the Middle East. I mean, she's brought about al-Qaeda. She's given the Muslim Brotherhood uh, Egypt. She's overthrown Gaddafi, who was cra as crazy as he was, was our, a strange ally of ours. She's causing the uh, uprising of uh, al-Qaeda in Syria. She's doing just wonderful work worldwide, so good so that the American media says she's beloved by all and she'll be the next president. Does Hillary Clinton care about this? Listen to clip 16 and listen to this cynical lie. I look at all these young women that I am privileged to work with or know through Chelsea, and it's hard to imagine turning the clock back on them. But in places throughout America, large and small, the clock is turning back. Can you so believe that they would continue this lie, this animal farm-like insanity, that unless you give us money and vote for us, they're going to put women back in aprons? and take away their right to vote. I never heard anything like this. The clock is turning back on women in the United States of America? Women are out earning men. There are more women in college than there are men. Everywhere you turn, there's a woman bossing men around. Take a look at Homeland Security, some prize of, of, of womanhood that is. Everywhere you turn, there's another woman, and she's saying the clock is turning back. This is right out of Animal Farm, but most of you don't even know who George Orwell is. I'll be back. Okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here. We just found a story on who did this to them. There are two fascist women uh, named Assistant U.S. Attorneys Bridget Brennan, a fascist in my opinion, and another fascist U.S. Attorney named Christy Parker. You ready? Hold on to your chairs. Bridget Brennan and Christy Parker were not satisfied with 15 years in prison. They wanted life in prison for the, ha for the uh, hair cutting. Federal prosecutors urged the judge to sentence Amish Bishop Samuel Muller to life in prison for coordinating a series of beard-cutting attacks on victims who shunned the bishop and his teachings. Instead, he was given 15 years. These two vicious Nazi fascists from hell, you know, prosecutors in this country are out of control. I don't know if you know this. You go into prisons. You talk to defense attorneys you will find that you have the most psychotic the most psychotic federal attorneys in history right now operating in this country 
Well, now we have focused on two of them. U.S. Attorneys Bridget Brennan and Christy Parker went after this man, as sure as I'm standing here, in the Christians because they hate the patriarchy, because they hate legitimate, normal families, and they wanted to break this religion over their, over their, over their knees. This is a hate crime on the part of these attorneys, in my opinion. These attorneys have a vendetta against Christianity, against the family, against traditional families, especially against Christian religious families. And you, the listener, now know their names. U.S. attorneys Bridget Brennan and Christy Parker, in my opinion, have committed a hate crime against these uh, uh, Amish people, and I believe they should be investigated, and I believe they should be tried for a hate crime. How's that? Do you believe this is the beginning of religious persecution in America? Or do you think this is just, well, it's a just sentence. Fifteen years for cutting the beard of a neighbor? And not one word on MSNBC, the alleged conscience of the left. Not one word from that foaming lunatic on any of the channels about one of the gravest injustices I have ever seen in my entire radio career. I will move on. Yeah, it's exciting. It's very exciting to talk about your federal government at work. It's exciting to inform you that a group of Amish people were put in jail for 15 years for cutting the beards of their fellow Amish because of two Nazi prosecutors, two women, by the way, who obviously have emotional problems with Christians, emotional problems with patriarchies, emotional problems with families that are traditional, and as a result... They asked not for 15 years for the beard cutting, but they actually asked the judge to sentence them to life in prison. We're going to continue to follow this. We're going to raise money for these Amish for a defense fund to get them out of jail, if we can. I'll try to get them a great lawyer. And then we're going to see if we can have the prosecutors, the U.S. attorneys, tried for a hate crime. There must be some statute. See, most of these attorneys are above the law. You have to understand something. They function in a vacuum. Just as politicians cannot be sued, and rarely do they ever pay any penalty for anything they do outside of uh, you know, a truly egregious crime, the U.S. attorneys are above the law. However, there must be a way to hang them by their own petard by finding something within the hate crime statutes that could be applied to U.S. attorneys themselves who exceed their authority. So we're going to see if we can hang these two by their own petard for doing this, by, for persecuting these Christians. Because if we let them get away with persecuting the Amish, hear me, 15 years in prison for beard cutting? A man named Corzine was in charge of an organization, a fund that disappeared at $1.7 billion. Uh, so far as I know, he didn't take a penny, but where's the $1.7 billion go? And before him, there was a Treasury Secretary named Paulson, who worked for Bush, who oversaw the dissolution of the United States of America's financial system he didn't pay one penny in in uh, any uh, crime in any uh, penalty for uh, having failed america as treasury secretary so how is this possible anyway i'm going to do this then we're going to move on yes yeah, so tonight i did the amish and the beard cutting now it's an oddball topic for me to get involved with but i feel that it's so symbolically important the persecution of these poor people that i felt that perhaps a general audience would relate to it really that's that's why i brought it up anthony and that's a subject that, that would be, uh, you would alienate a lot of people, and you had the guts to just put that out there. And I said, you know, I'm really going to listen to it because I know you're going to follow through. And, and it, it has to do with humanity, and that's what you're about. That's right. That's right. They're human beings. They're a religious minority. They're being persecuted by the federal government. Two vicious women who obviously have problems with men with Christians, with traditional families did this to them, to ask for a life sentence for a beard cutting? This is psychotic. This didn't even happen in the Soviet Union. Oh, they're, they're, well, they're, they're gonna, this will be appealed. This is not going... Well, who's going to... They don't, they don't have... They ha, do you know that they have a federal... Uh, they don't have a lawyer. They have someone appointed by the federal government as a defense attorney. They don't even have a private lawyer. That's why I want to raise money for them and get them some really vicious New York defense attorney. Someone who can tear the teeth out of the prosecutors. I want someone to tear the teeth out of them. And I want them to go after the prosecutors and, and charge them with a hate crime. With an enhanced hate crime for what they did to these Amish people. 
Anyway, thus far, I have tried to cajole you into understanding that there a grave misjustice has been done in America. Fifteen years for cutting the beards of fellow Amish by two vicious, malicious, Nazi-like U.S. attorneys in Ohio who wanted life in prison for this offense. You think that the punishment matches the crime? Of course it doesn't. Why would the government be going after the Amish people like this for a beard cutting? They gave the man 15 years. He didn't even engage in the beard cutting. They said he was the ringleader. Can you believe this? Do you know that murderers are charged with a lower sentence than this beard cutting group was given? Why is your government under Eric Holder doing this to the Amish? Is probably the most important question I've asked tonight. Tomorrow we will try to get the defense attorney for the Amish on the show and see if we can get a defense fund going and see if we can get them out of prison on an appeal and then we're going to see if we can get the U.S. attorneys who did this to them charged with a hate crime. We're going to try to hang the U.S. attorneys by their own petard. We're going to see if the hate crime statutes contain a clause that will apply to U.S. attorneys as well. Welcome to the USS of A.